What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Jeff. Today we got a little something different uh, that's going to be going up on the channel. Um, but first off, I'd like to address the fact that there was supposed to be a horror movie reaction going up over the weekend. Um, if you've been watching any of my more recent videos, I've been teasing that we would do a Bond movie last week and then a horror movie uh, during the weekend. And uh, yeah, that one's going to have to be put on hold. Um, it's been recorded, I've edited it three or four times now, and, uh, every time I try and upload it, it gets just completely blocked. Um, I've tried slimming it down, I've tried doing different tricks with it, every time it just does not happen. Um, so I'm gonna keep fiddling with it, hopefully eventually it goes up. But anyways, in today's video, I have thought long and hard over the last couple months and let it just kind of stew and marinate in my mind about things I want to see going forward in Matt Reeves' Batman movies. Um, the Batman has been out for like four or five months now. It's been four-ish months since I've seen it because I watched it uh, the night it dropped on HBO Max. Um, and I really enjoyed it. Even after all this time, I've rewatched it several times. I still think it is solidly in my second place if you were to rank all the live-action Batman movies. But yeah, I've actually thought long and hard about where I'd like to see this go in the future and what villains I would like to see this Batman take on head-to-head. -head. Um, so that's what we're going to be doing in today's video. I'm going to be counting down my top five most wanted villains to show up and face off against Robert Pattinson's Batman. So let's go ahead and get this started, but before we do, smash that like, smash the sub, hit that bell, so that you're notified whenever I release new videos, because, uh, yeah, we don't really have a schedule here, aside from just plowing through the Bond movies at the moment. But anyways, let's get to it. Let's start with number five. Number five is going to be Calendar Man. Now I know what you're saying. It's fucking Calendar Man. But Calendar Man is actually a fucking great villain. If you've never read The Long Halloween, I highly fucking suggest it. If you don't like graphic novels, then there's even a two-part animated movie, of which he features very prominently. His best-known modern appearance is in the miniseries Batman The Long Halloween, which I just said, where he's portrayed as kind of like a Hannibal Lecter figure, uh, offering insight in Batman's search for a serial killer known as Holidays, who uses Holidays as his modus operandi. Like Lecter, Calendar Man knows who the killer is, but he keeps his information to himself, choosing instead to taunt the heroes with cryptic clues. Calendar Man has also been in three of the four Batman Arkham games, if you've ever played those. Uh, he also had a minor appearance in uh, The Suicide Squad, portrayed by uh, Sean Gunn. In this universe, however, I kind of envision him as, like, the Hannibal Lecter. Could be an interesting approach to a villain in this universe that Matt Reeves has created. In my head canon, I kind of see him as, like, an opening scene. Diving right into Batman about to solve his crimes and catch him in the act. The rest of the movie, he'd be locked up with the Riddler, and... He could be taunting the Dark Knight over the true villain of the movie. But either way, no doubt in my mind that Calendar Man would make an excellent addition to the already established list of villains that we have in this new universe. Coming in at number four is the Mad Hatter. Mad Hatter is a character that actually showed up on several leaked villain lists, like pretty early on. I don't even know if those were ever confirmed to be actually real or fake. Um... But his name showed up quite a few times. Obviously, the Mad Hatter is obsessed with uh, Lewis Carroll's children's books, Alice's Adventures in Wonderland, and the sequel Through the Looking Glass. He's obsessive-compulsive, highly delusional. He's got an immature self-image, so he identifies more with children than adults. Uh, he has genius-level intellect. In the New 52, he suffered from a condition that uh, prevented him from physically maturing. Um, so he was taking testosterone-enhancing drugs that uh, permanently impaired his mental stability. Uh, elsewhere in other media, uh, like the show Gotham, uh, this version was a professional hypnotist who could control people's minds via his voice and a ticking device. And like Calendar Man, Mad Hatter has also made appearances in three of the four Batman Arkham games, so if you've played those, you know who the Mad Hatter is, and you know how cool 
this shit could be in live action. Obviously, with the noir-esque realism that the Batman has set as its tone, the Mad Hatter could work pretty well, disgustingly, as a pedophile or a sex offender type character. Yet another low-level criminal that could be a side attraction to the main villain early on, maybe in the story as like an opening capture or something, just to kind of show what Batman's been doing in between the two plots of the first and the second movie. But, who knows. Moving on right to number three is Hush. Now, obviously, Hush was hinted at very cleverly in the first entry of this The Batman Universe. For those of you that don't know Hush, uh, he was a victim of abuse and neglect. His uh, submissive mother rendered him a sociopath. Uh, Before even his teenage years, he was already operating on a high level of sociopathy, uh, going as far as severing the brake line of his parents' car to gain independence from them and inheriting their fortune by killing them. He was also childhood friends with Bruce Wayne and ends up really developing an irrational hatred for him because he kind of gets what he always wanted from his parents' death, but not through the same means. Almost kind of like an unreasonable amount of jealousy. Thomas Elliot also has an incredible genius level intellect, and he is a master planner with tactical skills rivaling those as our Cape Crusader. More recently, Thomas Elliot appeared in the TV show Batwoman, primarily portrayed by Gabriel Mann and by Warren Christie when he posed as Bruce Wayne. A variation of Hush also appeared in the 2019 animated film Batman Hush, which was met with, uh, yeah. Wasn't that great. He also made appearances in two out of the four Arkham games. And again, not really that great. Hush may be a little too similar to how the Riddler was portrayed in the Batman, but this character is highly popular and highly praised. It's honestly only a matter of time before he makes his big screen debut, and I would honestly be pumped to see him show up in the cinematic universe. Coming in at number two, or should I say, skating into number two, snowboarding, it's Mr. Freeze. I would expect everyone knows, or at least most people know, Mr. Freeze's updated origins that came from Batman the Animated Series and the incredibly wonderful Paul Dini. He was a brilliant cryogenicist, In college, he meets a woman named Nora, whom he ultimately marries. Nora contracts a fatal illness, so Freeze begins developing a freeze rave for Goth Corp in order to preserve her in suspended animation until a cure can be found. His boss, Ferris Boyle, decides to tell the mob about the gun, leading Batman to create a team of specialists to help him do his job better. As Freeze puts Nora in suspended animation, Boyle interrupts and tampers with the experiment, resulting in an explosion that kills Nora. Freeze survives, but the chemicals... In the freeze ray, lower his body temperature to the point where he must wear a cryogenic suit in order to survive. He swears revenge on those responsible for the death of his wife, whom he talks to often, and becomes Mr. Freeze. Obviously, this was changed a little bit in Batman the Animated Series, where his wife is very much still in suspended animation and is not killed, and he is constantly searching for a cure. That is also how they portray him in the Batman Arkham games. Mr. Freeze has appeared in quite a few other media, most notably that of the 1997 movie Batman and Robin, uh, Batman the Animated Series, three of the four Arkham games. But it's beyond time Freeze gets redeemed. In live action, he has never been done right. Clearly. Because Arnold Schwarzenegger did not do that character justice. He went all in, but, uh, yeah. I mean, clearly the blame is not squarely on his shoulders. He was directed to portray this character a certain way, and uh, it was not great. But this character needs a live-action redemption. Badly. So coming in at number one, I would be very curious to hear, before I say who my number one pick is, what you guys' top five characters are that you want to see as villains in this Batman universe. My first pick is probably going to surprise a lot of people, honestly. It's not a well-known character. It's not a highly requested character, as far as I'm aware. But it's a character that I think deserves the spotlight 
and in this particular universe could actually be very, very intriguing. That villain is the Phantasm. Andrea Beaumont, a.k.a. the Phantasm, first appeared as a main antagonist in the 1993 DC animated universe film Batman Mask of the Phantasm, where she was established as the girlfriend, then ex fiance of Bruce Wayne, a.k.a. Batman, prior to and around the time he first began his vigilante career as Batman. Since then, Andrea Beaumont has made occasional appearances in various DC animated universe media in her Phantasm guise, often as a freelance assassin working with Amanda Waller. In December 2020, Beaumont finally made her DC Universe comic book debut in Tom King's Batman slash Catwoman 12-issue maxi-series. Bruce Timm designed the Phantasm costume to reflect Alan Burnett's initial description of a Grim Reaper-esque character. Burnett wanted the villain to be reminiscent of the Ghost of Christmas Future. Andrea Beaumont is even mentioned as an Easter egg in Batman Arkham Origins, where postcards from Roman Paris addressed to Bruce Wayne bear her signature if you look for them. In this postcard, she is confirmed to be looking for her father and tells Bruce he knows how to meet her. The Phantasm has hardly ever been used outside of these appearances referenced here, so giving her a major motion spotlight would be brilliant. And she could finally join the excellent pantheon of female Batman live-action villains. Because we have fucking Catwoman, multiple Catwomen. We have fucking Talia al Ghul, who, despite her reveal being kind of shitty... It's actually a really great character. And obviously we have the amazing Margot Robbie as Harley Quinn. Who doesn't fucking love Harley Quinn? But yeah, the Phantasm is definitely a character that needs a live-action debut. She could fit very well in the Matt Reeves universe. And she's just an awesome fucking character that doesn't get the love and appreciation I think she fucking deserves. So that there is my list, my top five of villains that I want to see show up in Matt Reeves' Batman universe. Let me know what you guys think of the list and tell me yours in the comments below. Like, subscribe, hit that bell. Until the next video, guys, stay safe. We'll see you later. Take care, y'all. Mm -hmm.